Oh, good day everyone. In this video, I'm gonna be replacing the center bearing for the drive shaft on an E53 X5 BMW. So if you've got a bit of vibration coming from your BMW, either E46 or the X5, then this is gonna be a really good video because I'm gonna show you how simple it is to replace it. It's a fairly fiddly job because there's some other bits and pieces that have gotta come off first. But the actual bearing replacement is the sort of job that you can do at home without having to have a lift. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. But First, let's get finished this. So good. So good. I really love being behind the wheel of a BMW. They just drive extremely well. And this X5 is no different. This isn't my car. It's my daughter's boyfriend's car. And he was reporting that every now and then he got some weird vibration and he couldn't work out whether it was coming from the transmission or from the diff. My work truck is off the road, so I've had the opportunity to borrow this car and drive it a bit. And yeah, every now and then under heavy acceleration, you get this weird vibration come right throughout the car. Then after a while, the vibration got worse and worse. That prompted me to stick my head underneath the car to have a bit of an inspection. And then when I did, it was really obvious what the problem was. That center bearing was extremely loose and it was causing the tail shaft to vibrate up and down and sideways probably and uh, it was giving that vibration particularly under heavy load. I had a chat to him, I got some parts ordered and we're gonna change this out. Now it's a job that I've done on my E46 so I know what's involved in, in terms of doing it but this is an X5 and it's uh, all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive whatever you want to call it. So there's gonna be some differences underneath the car. Theoretically, it should be the same process as what I went through when I did the one on the E46. Let's get into the garage. We'll get this car up on a jack stand and we'll get it off and have a bit of an inspection and see how bad it is. First thing I'm starting with is I'm gonna remove the exhaust brackets so that I can lower the exhaust to roughly about six inches so I can get the heat shielding and the tin foil out. It was easier to take the brackets off rather than try to pry the rubber mount away. You only need to lower it about six inches. You don't need to take the whole exhaust system off, but make sure you support the back of the exhaust so that it's not just hanging loose and putting strain on the rest of the exhaust system, particularly up near the exhaust manifold. Once you've got the tin foil out, you can start loosening the bolts where it secures to the transmission. Now I couldn't get a socket in there to allow me to use my half inch breaker bar, so I've had to use spanners and piggyback back the spanners to break those loose. Also, what you'll need to do is have the car in neutral so that you can spin the tail shaft around to get access to all the bolts, particularly the ones at the top. It actually, surprisingly enough, took just as long to get all the tin foil and lower the exhaust as it did to actually take these 12 bolts out to get the tail shaft out. Same at the back, have it in neutral so you can spin the tail shaft to get access to all the uh, bolts. One of the differences I did find between the E46 and the E53 is that the bolts on the E53 are actually fixed into the flange on the uh, diff. So when it came time to removing the actual tail shaft, I had to pry the tail shaft not just out of the mating surface, but past those bolts as well. Whereas on the E46, you can actually take the bolts out. So it's a little bit easier on the E46. That bitumen was getting really hot, so I was a little bit uncomfortable getting the drive shaft out. For the most part, it's just fiddly. It's not complicated. The bolts where it connects to the transmission, they were really tight and they just fought me the whole way out. Sometimes you can sort of crack them and then they'll go finger tight, whereas these ones virtually needed the spanner right to the last few threads. And also on the diff side, had a bit of trouble prying the drive shaft loose from the diff. So I didn't film that unfortunately because I had a bit of trouble getting the camera underneath there and getting a good shot of it while I was trying to pry it. So I had arms and screwdrivers and pry bars going everywhere. But there's a notch 
on the end of the drive shaft so you, you can uh, get a pry bar in there and then sort of pry it forward away from the diff and it, it just sort of drops out. This is my new carrier bearing and I was going to replace the Guibo as well but unfortunately they sent me the wrong one so I'm going to have to return that. I really would have liked to have replaced it but it looks like it has been replaced probably within the last 50 or 60,000 kilometers anyway so what I want to show you is where the problem was because fair dinkum this is super dangerous that's what the new carrier bearing should look like and this is what's come off this x5 it's actually split so what's happened is that the rubber that's in the center here has deteriorated which means that the bearing was sort of bouncing up and down in there and it was bouncing up and down so much it split this metal casing i reckon within 50 kilometers this thing would have let go and if you were driving down the highway doing 100 kilometers an hour i hate to think of the consequences of that drive shaft sort of just dropping down so we've caught it and we're going to replace it what i need to do is separate the two halves of the drive shaft now i've got a white marker i'm going to make some marks to make sure that it goes back together and in the in the same alignment because these drive shafts are joined together and then balanced so when you disassemble it if you don't line the splines up in the exact same position then theoretically it could be out of balance and you're more than likely still going to get a heap of vibration because the drive shafts no longer in balance so i'm going to get on with that i'll move the camera around and uh, let's get this old bearing off and we'll get the new one on now i've used a little bit of wd-40 on that bolt that secures the two tail shafts together i've jammed a large screwdriver in between the knuckles on the universal joint so i can get enough leverage on it that bolt is only less than three quarters of an inch long but you can only turn it a couple of minutes at a time as you progress what you can do is start to pull the tail shafts apart so you've got enough room to get your open end span it onto the bolt to loosen it off. Take your time when you're getting the bearing off. You want to make sure you're hitting it with a chisel on the metal surface, not on the inner surface near where it uh, secures to the drive shaft. Use a extender socket which matches the bearing size and once again make sure you're bashing it on onto the metal surface not this inner rubber piece. A really good tip when you're making your marks also mark your rubber bush in terms of which side the deep end goes on. Getting that bolt back in there is really time consuming so if you've got fat fingers you know I do what I've done there and get a small flat blade screwdriver in there to help you sort of push it in to get the thread started or maybe get your missus out if she's got small fingers and get her to start doing it for you and then unfortunately it's a couple of mil at a time and that's job done and all we've got to do now is get it back into the car and do the reverse to get it back installed there you have it guys that's how you replace the center bearing on your e53 bmw now it's also a very similar process if you're working on your e46 most of your time is going to be spent removing those ancillary bits lowering the exhaust getting the tin foil out also having to put them back in but the parts themselves are less than hundred dollars Australian and the rest of the cost if you're going to take it to a mechanic is the labor to remove all those other bits so you can save a fair bit of dough by doing it yourself and it's certainly not a very complicated job set aside a Saturday or a Sunday to do it and you should be home and hosed if you've enjoyed the video don't forget to smash that like button and if you've got any feedback or any tips or ideas about replacing the center bearing on your BMW don't forget to leave us a comment so that we can share that with our other e46 and BMW viewers if you'd like to see more videos for BMW owners on performance upgrades and maintenance and also follow the build on my supercharged E46 325CI, then consider subscribing and don't forget to ring the bell so you get a notification every time I upload a new video. But I've really enjoyed your company. Thank you very much for watching. And until we meet again, look after yourselves, stay safe and TTFN.